This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. If you haven't subscribed to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or other podcast platforms where you can find us, I strongly encourage you to do that. Once you subscribe, you will be getting episodes of this show on your device as soon as it's available. This week we have another bonus episode for you. This time it is the recording of our recent webinar with Colin Contrary, Head of Content at Embrace, a performance analytics platform. Right now, we use and rely on so many apps in our daily life. We don't even register when we use all those apps. It's just how you connect with your family, do your banking, getting around in a city, shop for a variety of things, and so on. When all those apps do work, we are happy. When they crash, they drive us nuts. The focus of the webinar we're featuring in this episode was on identifying pain points. The battle against app crashes and ANRs stands for application not responding. And case studies. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Colin Contrary, Head of Content and Embrace, a performance analytics platform. Well, hello, hello, welcome, welcome back to Business of Apps Live. We've got a great online event lined up for you here. Good to see everyone, including a few regular faces. Hi, Molly in LA, Fahim in the UK. We've got Art in, uh, as he calls it, North York. We've got London in the house. We've got Dubai in the house, very international audience. Dublin, California. Okay, nice to see you, Pravina. Uh, so welcome to this live online Business of Apps event. A little bit of housekeeping. We're going to kick off very shortly. You have on the right-hand box here, some of you who, who come regular know, so you've got a chat box, which you can use to say hi or make a point during the session. You've got a Q&A box. That is a good place, the little question bubble. That is a good place to leave any questions. That'll be easiest for us to get to. We will have time for some questions at the end. So if you want, want them answered, then this is a great, great chance to do it. Leave a question in the Q&A box. We do have a poll running. Uh, Colin's going to come to this shortly, but if you want to have a look at that now, that's in the, the graph, the polls button. And I think that's about it. So uh, looking forward to this session, very important topic, better app experiences, that's what we all want. How to win the battle against crashes. Who better to tell you about than Colin from Embrace? So please give him a big uh, virtual welcome to the stage. Here he is. Hi, Colin. All right, thank you so much, James, for that awesome introduction. And I can feel the the virtual applause coming my way. Right. Um, thank right. you so much for being here today. Uh, like James said, my name is Colin Contrary. I'm the head of Content and Embrace, and you are here to learn about how to deliver better app experiences, and specifically to win the battle against crashes and ANRs and other app performance issues. So, like James said, before we start, there is a poll question that we'd love to get a, a sense of from the audience. Um, so, if you click in the graph on the right hand side and answer it. We're just going to give about a minute for people to answer, but consider the following aspects of your day-to-day -day work in mobile. Which of these are most important to you personally? So you'll see the options there. If everyone could go in and give a quick answer, we'd love to see what are uh, what's the most important thing to everyone here who's working in mobile. So let's just see. Yeah, I've got some votes coming in. So we'll just give it a few minutes. You don't have to overthink it. Hopefully the most guttural thing is the thing that is most important to you personally. But yep, I see a lot of votes coming. Oh, I see a lot of people picking many different answers. Interesting, interesting. Okay, yeah. So we'll give it just, just a few more seconds just to see. And okay, cool, okay. So I'm going to stop the poll there y'all have uh, submitted are responding to customer complaints or issues and also improving the performance of the apps I support. 
So remember those, because we're going to get to that in a minute. And thank you so much for responding. And we're going to talk about both of those in today's webinar. So let's get started. So I'd like to do a quick intro about me and Embrace. So uh, my name is Colin Contrary. I'm the head of content at Embrace. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm a father to three-month-old twin girls. Uh, I also haven't had much sleep lately. I don't know if that's related to bullet point two. And a little bit about Embrace. Uh, we help teams solve every mobile app issue so they can deliver better mobile experiences. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in this presentation as well. So let's start with why everyone's here. So if you're here, you're delivering mobile apps at scale. You have a good handle on what users are doing within your app. You know if they're checking out new features, if they're making purchases, if they're successfully onboarding, right? You have that type of visibility. But if you're like a lot of mobile teams out there, you might be struggling with one major piece when it comes to continually shipping great mobile experiences. And that is, how can you effectively improve app performance release over release? How do you know when an issue needs attention? How can you swiftly jump in and fix issues when they show up? In short, how can you make sure that you're meeting user expectations as you're continuing to innovate and grow your mobile app? And that is going to be the focus of today's webinar. Let's get started. So let's start with what are the biggest pain points for mobile app builders across the globe today? So where did we get this information? Well, we ran a survey for, of over 1,000 mobile engineering professionals across the globe, and we compiled the 2024 Mobile App Builders Report. Uh, it's available for download for free. If you look at the bottom of this web page, you can click it and get it because we're not going to have time to cover all the insights in it, and there's a lot in there. So I encourage everyone to check it out after this webinar. We uh, surveyed several different titles across mobile teams, whether it's engineers, engineering managers, all the way up to VPs, senior VPs, and CTOs. So a lot of visibility both on people building the apps, people building and running teams, et cetera. And also respondents were required to work on either a consumer mobile app or an internal company mobile app. So it didn't matter if it's out in the Play stores or if it's an internal one. And I'd like to cover just a few key insights that we found out from this report. So first of all, the poll here, and this, this question might look familiar. This was the poll question. Um, so your number one answer was responding to customer complaints or issues. But globally in our survey, the number one day-to-day uh, -day priority was improving the performance of the apps they support. So you'll see this list, a lot of common answers. Releasing code with fewer or no errors was number two. And working on new and innovative features was number three. But the biggest, biggest priority was improving app performance. And probably one of the reasons it was such a big priority is we also asked, what is one of the biggest frustrations in your day-to-day -day work? And spending too long fixing bugs in mobile apps was the number one answer. So clearly, mobile teams want to improve app performance. But a key problem getting in the way of that is that it just takes too long to solve issues. And if you look at the number two and number three responses, this is probably some, some supporting reasons why. They have too many systems or processes to follow too many tools, too many different data sources. And number three, not having the right tools for the job, feeling like they there's better tools to get them to the root cause of issues and delivering better experiences. So with that, this global audience has let us know it takes too long to fix issues and improving app performance is a big priority. So let's get into it. Why is improving app performance so difficult on mobile? Well, let's start with this. Every single mobile team is going to encounter issues and user complaints. It's, it's a given, given that the mobile ecosystem has so much complexity, right? You're shipping compiled code across many different devices, operating systems to users in many different countries with many different network connectivities. It's just inevitable you're going to run across issues, especially given that these devices have varying levels of system resources that your app can use. and you want to push the limits of what your app can do because you want to deliver incredibly compelling dynamic experiences. So inevitably, you will get the call that something is broken in the app. And this call can come from many number of places, right? It can come from user complaints, whether through support tickets or social media, it can come from management yelling at you that they found a bug in the app and they're convinced everyone on earth has found it as well. And so what's key to that is having an early discovery and diagnostics tool that makes it incredibly that's makes it incredibly important for engineers, marketing, everyone. That way you can find issues quickly so that you can mitigate their impact, put out fixes, and continue to deliver great experiences. And so it's very, very important for mobile teams 
to see exactly what your users are experiencing in the app. If you're going to resolve app errors and improve those user experiences, being able to detect performance risks early and having the full data. So 100% of the data from those affected user sessions so that you can go in and see exactly what has caused that crash. What are all the steps and technical details that led to that ANR? And that way you're fixing it when it's impacted only five users and not 5,000. That's how you become truly proactive. And so let's, let's talk about some of the tools that a lot of mobile teams use and where some of those shortcomings are. So let's talk about product analytics because product analytics is not user experience, right? It's not gonna show you technically what's going on under the hood as users are using your mobile app, right? So if you work in product, if you work in marketing, honestly, if you work anywhere in mobile, you're probably familiar with graphs and tools like these, right? Funnel analysis tools, heat maps, uh, session recordings or session replay. All these tools provide an overview of where users are taking actions within your app, and you can get high level patterns of behavior, but none of these are providing the technical details behind poor app performance. So for example, in this graph, if you've got a drop in conversions on the account creation flow, well, what's causing it? It could be a UX issue. It could be that users aren't seeing the you know, save profile button. It could be that things are running slow. It could be that images that are nudging users to complete their profile aren't loading. There are a number of things that could be going wrong and you won't have visibility into that unless you have the underlying details of those user experiences. And I'd like to talk through this with a great case study. So Curve is a FinTech company. They are a digital wallet that empowers users to maximize rewards from their credit cards. So users can choose how they earn rewards. They can streamline how they pay by combining cards into a smart virtual card, virtual debit card. They can switch charges from cards to cards, et cetera. So it's a, it's a great product for making uh, payments on uh, virtual credit cards. Because they are a FinTech product, they are a mobile first product. The mobile app is the lifeblood of their company. If they get users to download the app, they want them to complete that account creation profile, start using the app, see value, and then become repeat customers. And what they found out, like in one of those um, funnel analysis tools, was a lot of users weren't completing account creation. Or if they did, they weren't coming back and using the app. And so they wanted to know, well, what's going on? And so what they were able to find is that 40% of first-time users were suffering an app freeze during that account creation flow. So you, they downloaded the app, they uh, accepted permissions, they created their profile, right? They added or removed cards, things like that. And then they click the button that says, boom, save profile. I want to use this app. Boom, the app would freeze. That's a really bad first time user experience. And for it to be happening for 40% of your users, you can imagine the level of churn and goodwill that they were losing um, on an ongoing basis if they couldn't resolve it. And so none of those product analytic tools would be able to help them solve that. The solution was actually, they actually had multiple technical things running while users were saving that profile. So there was an animation that was running and there was also a data synchronization. So collecting all that profile data and sending it to the server to update the profile. And by being able to go in and see exactly when the animation started, when the data synchronization was started, when the data synchronization was running on the main thread versus it should have been on a background thread, they could very quickly see what was causing the freeze and then eliminate it and then completely streamline their new account creation flow so that no users experience this costly freeze. So I think that's a great example of needing to get down into the technical details to improve your funnels. You. Okay, so uh, you're familiar with product analytic tools. You're definitely probably familiar with mobile monitoring tools. And these also are not presenting the full user experience. So this is another um, result from the Mobile App Builders report, and that is that 98% of respondents said that they are using some sort of tool to monitor their apps. So almost every single mobile team is monitoring their app. And yet, the biggest pain point is improving app performance. And one of the problems is mobile teams lean heavily on free and low-cost solutions that don't provide enough visibility. So some of the key complaints were they did not have enough functionality for specialty issues, such as ANRs, which we'll get into a bit later, their app freezes, uh, networking issues, whether it's on the first party endpoints or stemming from third party SDKs. Also look at one of these complaints, not enough detail or granularity of data, right? So kind of maybe it's showing them that there's a problem, but not helping them get to the actual root cause. And why this is, is that current mobile monitoring solutions frequently are limited and fragmented, right? The industry has sort of decided that mobile app monitoring is crash reporting and errors, but 
that's not really giving you the full picture of end user experiences, right? If we think of the full iceberg, so to speak, that involves a lot more types of data that you need visibility into. So performance, right? Is the app running slow in different areas? Um, networking, are your network calls completing? Are they taking too long? Are they downloading too much data and causing the app to run out of memory, right? Logging, analytics, right? Where are users taking actions within the app? So when we think about all these pieces of data, it's no wonder if you're relying on free and low cost tools that are only surfacing specific issue types, you're gonna have serious gaps that prevent you from solving some of the more complex issues that can happen within your mobile apps. And I'd like to walk through another case study that outlines this very well. So Goat, uh, if you're not familiar, is the leading and most trusted sneaker marketplace in the world. Uh, they also offer apparel and accessories from over 350 brands, and they deliver products to over 30 million members across 170 countries. So it's a very large, successful e-commerce platform. And like many retailers and e-commerce companies, Black Friday is the biggest event of the year for Goat, with a surge of interested buyers looking, to, looking for deals. It's also the biggest event in terms of managing complexity because they are releasing new products, coupons, promotions, discounts. They're running all types of ads. They're driving users into every single part of the app through deep links, through um, uh, posts on social media. So you can imagine the number of new users and returning users skyrockets, and they're getting into many places in the app in order to buy many, many types of products at many, many types of prices. So the problem is when Goat would receive user complaints during Black Friday events, they were using Firebase, which is a mobile app monitoring solution focused on crashes and errors, and they could not quickly look up what was actually happening to users when these complaints would come in. And so once they were started using Embrace, when they got user complaints, they were able to immediately look up the full user experience and see what exactly the issue was. So some common types of issues that crop up are deep linking issues. So someone trying to link directly into a deep part of the app they are able to put out a hotfix for deep linking issues. And hotfixes, if they surface new crash patterns, which understandably happen when you have such a surge in interest during that big event. And so the end result of being able to immediately dive into those user experiences is that they were able to maintain 99.99% crash-free rating, which is already incredible outside of a big event like Black Friday. But this is despite the fact that the, the apps across Android and iOS had a 48% increase in traffic. So such a wonderful example of having that visibility, letting you go in, fix issues before they impact such a high business value event. Another quick one I would like to cover um, is about ANRs. So Wildlife is one of the largest mobile gaming studios in the world, and they were struggling with ANRs in their mobile games. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, it stands for application not responding. These are prolonged app freezes that frequently result in a termination of that given session. And what's important is that the Google Play console penalizes apps and games that have technical issues, and ANRs are one of the biggest ones that they will penalize you for. So you will not rank as highly as you would like, and you will also not get featured as frequently or at all if your game has a high crash and ANR rate. So we really helped the wildlife team get their games below this ANR threshold, and it significantly increased how frequently their games were able to get featured on the Play Store, which really boosted their organic discoverability and downloads. So um, I could talk about ANRs for hours and hours. We've done multiple presentations on this. So if you're in the mobile gaming space or your app ranking and the amount of times you're featured in the Play Store, if this is something that is very crucial to you, please reach out to me after. I'd love to share resources and talk to you further about it because this is a very deep topic. And so we've just covered mobile monitoring solutions. Now let's talk about backend observability solutions because a lot of teams are using these legacy observability solutions that have built a mobile facing component to produce that end to end visibility. But their core, their bread and butter is backend observability. And that is not user experience, right? That is built for systems. That's understanding the health of systems. Of cloud compute, uh, of, of cloud computers, of services, uh, transactions. It's not really built for the detail required to understand user experiences. Uh, observability solutions solve backend problems, right? They're focused on infrastructures, infrastructure monitoring, and application monitoring. They care about 
Are they failing? Are they running slow? Is the infrastructure healthy? Do you need to spin up more instances? Are you over provisioned? Right? Questions like these. And I'd like to talk through another case study about why relying on the full end to end visibility provided by a legacy observability solution frequently won't let you solve issues quickly or efficiently. So I'm sure we're all familiar with Adidas. They're one of the most well known fitness brands in the world. Um, Adidas Runtastic is a mobile fitness app whose mission is to help its users live healthier and more active lives by giving them what they need to track activities, boost performance, and celebrate success in their fitness journey. So it can connect, it's a mobile app, but you can connect it to wearables, right? Like an Apple Watch or a Garmin, so that when you go on runs, it tracks your performance, it tracks you know where you run, how fast you run, syncs it so that you can see, are you able to uh, run faster, run longer, right? It just helps you understand uh, improving over time. And so one of the, and they were using New Relic for their back end, and they were using the mobile component of New Relic on the front end. And one of the big problems was New Relic sampled data heavily and relied excessively on logs in order to understand user experiences, as opposed to collecting the full picture up front. And so their initiative was they wanted to become more proactive when it came to solving issues in the app. And for example, they had an ongoing data sync issue that they just could not solve with New Relic. And what this means is users would go on a run and then they would go to their phone, right? Because let's say they're wearing their Apple Watch, then they go to the phone to look at their stats for the day and the data doesn't show up. So the data would not sync to their back end between the phone and wearables, et cetera. And you can imagine how frustrating that'd be, especially if you're someone who wants to track that data when all that great health and fitness data vanishes. And so what happened is they were able to find the root cause using a tool like Embrace without needing to add logs and release new app versions to try to understand the full picture. They could immediately, when someone complained, they could look up what happened to them and figure out what the conditions were that caused the data sync issue and then fix it. And what they found with the depth of data that a platform like Embrace provides is that these data sync issues were stemming when the app was in an extended background phase, and especially when it was in low power mode. And they could see which devices in low power mode when the app was in extended app backgrounds were causing this. And then they could re-architect how the data sync worked in order to eliminate these data losses. And so the result long-term is they are able to ship, I mean, they are able to fix issues within a single release cycle. So they can maintain their uh, the release cycle that they want to maintain, which is every two weeks. They don't have to waste an entire release cycle adding logs to build up visibility. So they can they're 50% faster at issue resolution, and they also have 50, and they have much many fewer release candidates before they're confident in submitting a new version to the store. So I feel like that is a great example of wanting that visibility into your mobile apps in order to move faster as an organization. So next, I want to talk about how you can connect key metrics to user and business outcomes. And so I want to go through a little flow here to walk you through how this should work in the best of cases. So First of all, your business, you're growing your mobile app. You need to start with your key product and business metrics, and this will vary depending on your app, right? Your key metrics might be engagement based, right? If you're a social media app where it's about getting users into the app and engaging with other users, it might be uh, usage based if it's a content app, right? Like reading articles or watching video courses. Um, and it might be revenue based, right? If you're e-commerce, right? it's boosting average cart value. It's minimizing the number of abandoned carts. So you have to start with those key metrics that you're tracking on an ongoing basis. And then what you need to do is you need to be collecting the behavioral and technical signals that bubble up to those metrics. So if we use the example of a dating app, and this, was, uh, this happened with a customer at Embrace, one of their key metrics was how many users liked other people's profiles. That was a key engagement metric that revealed users that were most engaged with the app who would wanna come back again and again. So if we use that example, the behavioral and technical signals would be things like, how long does it take for a user to like someone's profile, right? If that slows down over time, that's probably worth investigating because users don't want to sit around to wait for those key actions to complete, right? Frequency, how many times are they liking someone? Is that going down over time or increasing over time? And failure, obviously. How many times does someone click that button and the app just says, nope, you can't like that profile, right? That would be very frustrating for users. So once you're collecting those signals, the next step, and this is where a lot of people have gaps, is, well, understanding how users are responding when those issues happen. So if we go through a few examples, 
when it takes longer to like profiles, do users just wait patiently and then try again? Do they abandon the app or you know force quit it? Do they move on to the next profile and try? If users are liking fewer profiles, is that a good or bad thing, right? If they're liking fewer profiles because they're making matches more efficiently, that's a good thing. If they're liking fewer profiles because they have to swipe through many, many, many more profiles to find a match, well, maybe that means your matching algorithm is performing poorly, right? Maybe you updated the model and it's not delivering great potential matches for users and they're getting frustrated. And obviously failure metrics, right? No one wants to like someone's profile and it just doesn't work. So, but how bad is it, right? Are they immediately quitting the app? Are they trying a few times before they give up? So understanding how users respond when technical issues happen is crucial. And then the big thing is you need to prioritize the issue, right? So you see how users respond. So now what you need to do is you need to be able to go from any affected user experience once you see what happened. And now you want to know what is the full impact across all your users, right? Which user segments are affected? And in mobile, many, many issues will apply to very specific user segments, right? If you think of segments as specific countries, specific devices or specific device model types, uh, specific operating systems, right? Specific app versions you shift, you shipped. So there are so many combinations of variables that can bubble up issues. It's really important to be able to see what are all the patterns, what are all the commonalities in the affected user segments so that you know when you fix it, which devices are going to get the fix so that you know it's resolved and also that it's worth fixing. And the biggest thing is also understanding is it's worth fixing, right? Based on the business impact is if if you have some sort of crash that might be happening again and again and again and again and again, but it's happening to very, very, very few users that are on unsupported device types because you've decided no longer to support it because it's too old, that might not be worth your engineering time to fix. Whereas if you're just prioritizing based on the total count of an issue type, you might spend a whole bunch of engineering time fixing it when really it's not going to move the needle on your business. And so the last one is obviously you want to be able to solve the issue with complete data. Once you know it's worth solving, you don't want to have to burn release cycles, right? Like that uh, Adidas uh, case study where they had to add logs, ship new versions, see if they could understand the root cause, and then fix it you know, in the next release after that. So once you know you want to fix it, you want to immediately identify the affected user sessions. You want to view the issue within the full context of when it happened to a user so you know exactly what's caused it. And that way you're able to reproduce and resolve issues quickly. And this is without manual work, without engineers having to manually pull devices and try to go step by step through the app. I mean, that takes a lot of time, a lot of guesswork, and it's not reliable or predictable from an issue resolution timeline perspective. And so if that circle that I just covered to you sounds daunting, you might have a mobile visibility problem because the best mobile companies in the world have gotten to this loop where they are monitoring the metrics they care about. They can see anomalies or regressions. They can immediately look at who's affected. They can see the patterns, right? Where does it happen across your users? And if it's time to solve it, they can go in, get the full details and solve it without having to do a lot of time, energy, and guesswork. So I want to sum up that with a great case study that I feel like uh, talks about a lot of these topics. So touch surgery is a surgery uh, tutorial app. So what it is, is it's for physicians and medical students to download and review surgical simulations so that they can learn how to do different surgical procedures. And so what the challenge was is the mobile team behind touch surgery, they had no visibility into the impact or the root cause of user reported failing startups. So they would get user complaints right sent in that said, I try to launch the app and it just doesn't launch. And so then the mobile team would go into their tool. It was uh, Firebase at the time. They would try to figure out, okay, what was going on? They would try to manually reproduce it. They couldn't. And so they would say, we have no idea how many users this is impacting and we can't make heads or tails of it. So we throw our hands up. And this would happen again and again and again because they just could not figure out what was happening. Once they had Embrace, first of all, they got the full impact of this issue. And what they discovered was 15% of their app startups were failing. So imagine that as a business. If you found out 15% of the time people launched your app, it just wouldn't launch. That is tremendously bad. And what they also found was that these 15% of startups were failing. And 
it was to a very valuable user segment because it was happening to their power users. So it was happening to users who had downloaded and were viewing the most videos. So that's another big thing that you don't want to have happen. You want your power users to have the best experiences because you want them to come back again and again in your app. And what the problem was is that on app startup, A, these physicians and med students were using the app in hospitals, which traditionally don't have great Wi-Fi, right? They don't have great network connectivity. And the app would be downloading updates to these heavy surgical simulations. So these simulations, right, you can imagine trying to understand how to do an appendectomy, right? It's a lot of heavy images and video files. So some of them were up to 300 megabytes. And so if I, as a user of the app, had 50 of them on my app, the app might start downloading updates to all 50, which would grind to a halt without great network connectivity. And so all this visibility that they could see within the context of what was happening technically when users launched the app allowed them to immediately understand, okay, we need to move these updates into the background so they're not blocking the app. And we need to move them later so that users can get into the app and start viewing other tutorial videos. And also moving forward, having this level of visibility let them significantly reduce their mean time to detection and resolution. Because now when they got a complaint from someone using it, they could look up the full user experience, see what was wrong, and immediately put out a fix. So I want to summarize what we've covered today, because we have covered a lot. <laughs> so first of all, we started with um, what mobile app builders around the globe have told us. And what everyone here has told us is their second biggest concern, <laughs> which is mobile improving mobile app performance is a top priority. And what we've also covered is mobile teams frequently struggle with limited visibility into user experiences. So we went through the examples of you know, product analytics tools, existing mobile monitoring solutions, and using backend observability tools in order to understand what's going on in your mobile apps and how frequently there are big gaps that prevent engineers from understanding the impact of issues and being able to swiftly resolve them. And third, we covered the importance of connecting these key metrics directly to user experiences, uh, because that is crucial for proactively improving app performance, right? You want to be able to understand when thing, when you have technical regressions in your app, who is affected? Are they high value users? Is it, an, is it bad enough that it is worth prioritizing engineering effort to fix it immediately? And if you can't connect these metrics to what's actually happening to your users, then you're back in the, in the ballpark of guessing and just thinking you should solve it without really knowing if we fix this, these many users will have great app experiences moving forward. So I hope this webinar was helpful in highlighting some of the biggest challenges to delivering seamless mobile experiences, as well as what best in class visibility looks like when it comes to shipping great mobile apps. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for being here and uh, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions now. Okay, great. Thanks, Colin. Okay, let's put you in the hot seat there. <laughs> um, I think we got through. Yeah, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, uh, choppiness here and there, but I don't think it affected uh, you know the the content at all. So, um, right. So we do have a few questions. Okay, Sahil is asking, can you share the circle diagram again? Maybe we can go back to that quickly and keep Sahil happy. Um, which I've one's never been that? asked to share a diagram again. Uh, this this awesome. one? Okay, let's, let's zoom in on this. Hang on. Let's see if we can focus in here. Is this the one, Sahil? Yeah, is this the one? Um, now, we will be having the recording. Everyone signed up to this is going to get the recording, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. Hopefully that's, yeah. that helps with Sahil. And I'll be, right. I'll be sharing uh, my uh, email at the end, Sahil. So if you'd like me to send you the full slides, you can just let me know afterwards, and I can I can send you them. Is there anything you wanted to me to answer about the the image, or did you just want to see it? Mm -hmm. okay, I agree. Can, okay, let's okay, well, let's let's go into. Oh, he's he's asked in there. Okay, I took a screenshot. Right, he's happy. Great. Oh, okay. okay, well, uh, a couple of questions. If anyone has any more, drop them in the Q and A. So Art is asking, uh, what types of app is is this sort of thing most useful for? So uh, he mentions, you know, you mentioned e-commerce or games. You know, are there any particular verticals where, you know, this is particularly vital? Yeah, I can definitely see the e-commerce example where you're getting the Black Friday surge and, you know, 80% of your revenue that year is on one day and you've not stress tested the app and, you know, but there is, is that a main one? And yeah. Yeah, great question. So we actually support pretty much 
uh, every mobile platform. So let, let's start there. So if it's if you're building in Android or iOS, or if you're using a cross-platform framework like React Native or Flutter, and like I covered in the wildlife uh, case study, we support Unity, so mobile games built in Unity. In terms of use cases, basically, if your business relies heavily on your mobile app, then we are a great tool for you. So if it's just a supporting app that doesn't have a lot of usage, that's not business critical, then yes, you might not need something as you know full featured and complete as Embrace. But to give you an example of some of the companies we work with, we work with uh, companies like the New Yorker, so like big heavy media companies that that they want uh, users to be able to use the full um, experience within the app. They're realizing people are going on the web less often, so being able to review articles and content within the app is crucial. Obviously, e-commerce customers um, is a big one, right? Because you can directly see the revenue that's that you're losing if the app has performance issues. But we also work with um, uh, travel and hospitality brands, so a lot of big hotel brands like Hilton right? Where you might be booking your room in the app, but you might also be using the app just to have a contactless experience within the hotel, right? So if you've been traveling a lot, a lot of hotels, you don't even need to go get a room card. You can just use your app to get in the room or to get in the gym. So it's a it's a supporting but very important piece to their business to deliver that seamless user experience. So I would say um, those are some big examples of uh, companies that use this. But like in the case studies I covered, um, if you're a health and fitness app, you frequently are dealing with um, big stretches where you don't have great network connectivity, right? So like a running app, you might be running um, uh, around the city and lose connectivity and being able to sync that data and understand where those problems are happening. Um, one of our customers is AllTrails, right? Which was listed as the 2023 iPhone app of the year. And one of their big challenges is you go on hikes in the middle of nowhere for days at a time. So you want to be able to download those maps ahead of time, but also be able to you know, track your hikes. And then when you get back to the city and you get connectivity, have all that data work seamlessly. So basically any use case where you might have uh, issues within the app, whether it's due to network connectivity or trying to deliver great experiences. And if you're having trouble getting to the root cause of these issues with the tooling you're using, I would consider checking out Embrace. Right, thanks. Colin, so, and then once, well, once you've identified this as a problem, it's a question from Andrew, what's the process for making an improvement? I mean, what do you, uh, you know, you, in, you install, you, what, what, how do you, how do you make, how do you make the change and what, what's required? Yeah. Oh, what's required? Well, depending on Andrew, um, so we're an SDK that you put in the app. Okay, I can read the question. What's the process for improving crash rates and errors once you've identified it as a problem? So the biggest thing is um, what Embrace will show you is A, the crash patterns in your app. So we have um, a crash grouping methodology that's way better than a lot of what you get in other tools so that you're not going to solve the same crash again and again, right? Get that, oh, we have three instances of 15 different crashes. If it's the same crash, Embrace will group those together. So you solve it once and you're done. So A, you're solving fewer issues, but long term, uh, let's talk specifically a &Rs, and I'll be very brief because, like I said, I could talk about this forever. If you work in mobile games or apps that have a &Rs, you know that it is an incredibly difficult problem that you will never really be able to eliminate because an a &R is just a prolonged app freeze. And that can happen outside of your control, right? If you are running a lot of third-party SDKs, right? Let's say you're a mobile game and you have seven different ad networks. Well, you're not in control of that code. And if they are sending slow network calls that are blocking the app, the only way you're going to find out is if you have, you know, a telemetry collector like Embrace that will show you, oh, this ad vendor is constantly freezing the app. So how do you solve it long term? With something like ANRs, it's about seeing where they're at, seeing if there are bad offenders, and then you can contact them, right? If it's a third party, you can ask them to fix their code or worst case scenario, you can remove it. If the problem's with your code, it's more a matter of figuring out well, what is causing it, right? Are we instrumenting something in an inefficient way, right? So the example I gave of Curve, right, with the account creation flow, it was just a problem that they were trying to save user profiles and what they were doing was blocking the main thread as opposed to moving that work to a background thread to not impact performance. So once they found out they were doing that, you do that fix, that problem's not gonna crop up again. So frequently what mobile teams find when they use Embrace is they find a lot of things that they just didn't know were happening in the app. And once they figure out, oh, this is what the problem is, 
once they resolve it and they moving forward know not to do that kind of behavior in the app, then the problems don't resurface. But yeah, it's mobile so complex, it's hard to, for me to give you a uh, a five step process to never have crashes. If I had that, I'd uh, feel like I'd make a lot of money somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Okay, and this is a good question from Nathan. Uh, who so who should actually own this? The the who do you find is is concerned about this in the organization? The the issue of crashes is it the the tech team? Is it the marketing team? Who who you know ultimately a is this a burning platform for and b is the one that's going to you know help to to solve it? Yeah, so we are a tool that is used primarily by mobile engineers. So depending on the size of your organization whoever deals with tool acquisition, right? If you're a large company, you might have an entire platform team that determines the tooling for all the different platforms you support. But essentially we are used by engineers, we are vetted by engineers. So if you're a mobile first company where your app is your business, right? Like Curve, then we might talk to the CTO. The CTO might be heavily vetting tools, right? If you're a larger org that has their own, you know, VP of mobile or director of mobile within it, right? They might be a person to talk through. Are your engineers, delivering great app performance, right? If your crash rate is is fantastic, if you don't have app breezes, if you don't have any user complaints, right? Then it's a matter of um, we are a tool that ongoing is a great safety net in your app because you have us in production. Your app is never static, right? You're always building and adding features. So even if your app is crash free and, uh, you know, A&R free, you know, this version, you might ship, you know, three new features in a couple of weeks and all of a sudden regressions happen. So I don't think anyone's going to argue you don't need monitoring in the app. But if your question is, who, who is this used for? It's it's used by mobile engineers um, in order to understand like the technical reasons why things are happening in the app. Great, thanks. And Fahim is asking, well, what's if you've got this issue, what's the fastest way to solve it then? Is there any quick fixes? Obviously, you would say, you know, work with Embrace. Um, but yeah, what if you've got this problem? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what you mean by this type of issue if you're referring to crashes, A and R's, but you know what? With Embrace, doesn't matter the issue type. So we didn't do a full product demo today, but essentially um, you can start a trial for free. If you'd also like to see a demo, uh, we'll show our website at the end. You can go there and see it. But essentially when I talk about being able to see the full technical and behavioral details of a user session, oops, sorry, excuse me. Frequently mobile engineers don't really know what that is or they haven't seen it before. But essentially what it is, is a play by play of every technical thing that's happening in your app. So what are all the network calls that fire during your app startup and how long do they take and what order do they fire, right? If a user goes to the screen, um, what sort of data is it loading? Like how long does it take the screen to load? Are the images that it's trying to download, are they you know, succeeding? Are they at 200 or are they 400 Um, When a user experiences an error, what led up to it, right? Did the error happen because the service that that button was trying to call, like, you know, never connected, right? So like, it was it a, if it's trying to sync data, was the Bluetooth connection between the phone and the, and the wearable, right? So essentially what Embrace does is whenever you have an issue affecting a user, you can jump immediately into every single technical detail that that user experienced when using the app. So if you are used to something like Firebase, where maybe you're used to getting a crash report, or an error log, and then maybe you get a couple breadcrumbs here and there. This is miles beyond that. It's very eye-opening when engineers see the type of telemetry you can get with Embrace and how you solve it is it's it's more a matter of, okay, what do you want to do in the code to fix it? It's it's not a matter of, oh, I don't understand what's going wrong because Embrace uh, with all those details, engineers immediately understand exactly what caused the issue. Then the biggest problem is just putting out the fix. Great, thanks, Colin. Um, well, I think we're pretty much um, out of. Uh, oh, so Milek asked in the chat, any plans to support Windows and Mac OS desktop top, uh, a desk Mac, Windows and Mac OS desktop apps with your tool? Yes, great question. So as of now, there is no plans to support anything outside of mobile platforms. So we are a mobile first and mobile only solution. So while we might support other platforms that ship mobile apps, supporting desktop is is not something we are pursuing as a as a company right now. Yeah. And is your 
Final question for me is, is your perception this is becoming a bigger issue over time with, um, as you say, proliferation of SDKs and, uh, you know, I guess as well as apps, as you say, being more persistent. Yeah, I went to Disney recently and if you the app had gone down, you couldn't do anything, including, you know, buy any water or, you know, go on any rides. And as you say, the hotels is your key. So is this like a bigger problem or is actually it's, you know, I would have thought things would be getting better over time as the, the tech matures. But Yeah, no, that's a great question, Jay. Big companies, right? Think about how often you're going to go buy something at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot and you place the order in the app and you click, oh, deliver it to my car. I just want to pick it up. Um, online, you know, groceries, like ordering that. Like I uh, said before about um, hotel chains, e-commerce, uh, e obviously, but also like digital payments, right? We're seeing a lot of uh, fintech players go into that space because uh, increasingly, like people don't want to, you know, spend money. It's all about how can I just transmit money like through a mobile app. So we are seeing a continual uh, and honestly accelerated investment in mobile across businesses. And I would ask everyone here if you're wondering, like, well, will this continue? Think about how many apps you use when you engage with businesses these days, right? Whether it's an app that deals with like reward points, or uh, you know, if you go to Target, you got to download the Target apps so that you get those discounts, and now they're gonna submit a, a target uh, a premium membership uh, portal. So uh, yes, we are, we are seeing a, a large and sustained investment and transition towards mobile as a primary touch point. Yes. Okay, great. So what's the next steps? People want to fight, they convinced that this is an issue and uh, they're worried about it. What what can they do next? Um, yeah. So got, if you can, got the builders we, report there at the bottom. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we can still see my slides. So if, if you would like to learn more or you'd like to, you know, ask me additional questions or get clarifications on anything I've talked about today, um, you can contact me. So here's my email, Colin with one L, the correct way to spell Colin, um, but Colin at embrace.io. And you can also go to our website. So embrace.io. So we've got a great uh, virtual product tour you can take. Um, you can also just start a free trial on your own if you'd like to just try us in one of your apps, or if you'd like to see a full demo from one of our, um, for, from one of our uh, Embracians, then you can just request a demo and we'll, we'll show you a full demo. And depending what sorts of pain points you have in your app, we can tailor the demo to show you how Embrace helps with that use case. So if you're struggling with crashes or if you're struggling with areas of your app running slow, or maybe your app has to connect with a lot of different devices, so you're having connectivity issues, so our, our platform is very powerful and we can help with uh, basically every single mobile app issue type you have, we can help. Great. Thanks, Colin. Well, yeah, I hope that was useful, everyone. And yes, like you um, said, James, I would highly encourage everyone here to download the, the 2024 Mobile App Builders Report. There's a lot more insights that mobile teams around the globe shared with us that I didn't have time to cover in this webinar. So I encourage you to read it uh, and see what to, how others across the globe are, are, are dealing with the challenges of mobile today. Right. Oh, thanks, Beth. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, good. Good session, Colin. Thanks a lot for that. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, um, yes, yeah, quite uh, interesting and important uh, issues there, uh, especially as you say, uh, apps and mobile become more and more important. It's no good if they're crashing all the time. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Colin, for sharing that. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll have you back again soon. Maybe do a demo or go into a bit more detail. Great. Right. Thanks. Everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. everyone. And that was Colin Cantareri, head of content at Embrace, a performance analytics platform. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Just search for Business of Apps. And you will find us easily. Remember. We release episodes on Mondays, so subscribe and you will be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review or comment on iTunes. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.